Welcome back everyone for today's video we are going to be taking a look at a game that was played in the Madrid chess festival now as many people know there was an event in Spain called the clash of the claims more like the clash of cringe as I like to call it between Jose Martinez Alcantara and the former world champion Vladimir Kramnik but one of the people who was in Spain covering that event was Levy Rosman the international master from New York or the United States now Levy decided to compete after that clash of claims event and he's playing in the Madrid Invitational which is a round robin tournament featuring 10 players now in the first round Levy is playing black against the top ranked player in the tournament Tomas Sosa from Argentina now Tomas Sosa is probably a name that most of you guys have not heard but as my chat informed me earlier he is in fact the current coach of the rising junior the so-called Messi of chess Faustino or the 10 year old wonderkin from Argentina so Levy playing against a very strong player Tomas Sosa rated 25 35 in the first round and let's jump right into the action so the game starts out with Sosa playing the move e4 and now we get this move c6 being played by Levy c6 obviously is the Karo Khan opening it has been Levy's primary opening for a very long time the game continues with this move d4 or sorry knight f3 I should say I'm looking at chat too much we get knight f3 and now we have the move d5 and here knight c3 is played by Tomas Sosa now this of course is a classic two knight setup against the Karo Khan it's a very very stable setup for white in general in this position and what white tries to do is avoid committing to playing d4 too early you might want to bring the bishop out on this diagonal you might want to go g3 and bishop g2 but a lot of different ideas and a lot of flexibility but most importantly this is what I like to call the lazy man's variation where you don't have to know the theory and you simply try to play chess so Levy continues with Bishop g4 we now get the move h3 Bishop takes Knight Queen takes Bishop and this move e6 now many of you guys probably will remember the setup where black creates this nice pawn chain from f7 to d5 and b7 to d5 which Levy and I actually played in the recent chess.com event about two months ago we had this tandem event where Levy and myself we played this against the combination of Eric Hansen and Jordan Van Forst so we get bishop e2 and now levy plays move bishop c5 we get castles and the move knight d7 all pretty standard so far one of the reasons levy puts the bishop on c5 is to try and stop white from playing d4 to build the big white center we get queen g3 and now the move bishop to d4 creating the classic wooden shield with the bishop on d4 where it targets all the diagonals but most importantly it guards this pawn on g7 game continues with e takes d5 we get e takes d5 and now sosa plays the move bishop g4 here levy goes knight to e7 important move by the way because even if knight f6 is probably okay white has the move rook to e1 checking the king and forcing you to move the king and now black can no longer castle the king and the rook so we get knight e7 also makes a lot of sense because now if white ever takes the bishop there's no fossil involved because after it takes the pawn on g7 is still guarded so we get this move knight to e2 and now we have the move bishop to f6 from levy we get the move d4 white has created his center here with the pawn on d4 supported by the knight and he intends to develop the dark sword bishop levy plays move h5 and now sosa goes bishop f3 and here levy plays a very very aggressive move which is this move pawn from g7 to g5 now this is not the top computer move but it is a move that from a practical standpoint makes a lot of sense because in this situation there's a famous phrase from chess which the famous former world champion Michael Tal said which is in chess you want to take your opponent into a deep dark forest where two plus two equals five or it's something along those lines I could have a little bit wrong but it, but that I think you guys get the gist of the point which is you try to get your opponent out of his comfort zone where he has to find the best moves and in this case white has only one move to maintain a significant advantage which is this awkward looking move queen d6 now the reason that white is still quite a bit better here is that white can put the knight on g3 to put pressure on this pawn in h5 and the bishop on c1 still targets this pawn on g5 and black has to figure out how to proceed now after a move like knight f5 and queen to a3 here black is still very much in the game after queen b6 something like bishop to d2 and then a move like queen a6 but i do think that after queen d6 white has an advantage now of course as i said this is a very tough move to find i'm actually somewhat skeptical that someone below 2600 could find this move and in fact his opponent tomas sosa decides instead to play the more human approach by taking the juicer on g5 we now get rook to g8 pawn to h4 levy trades the bishops and goes knight to f5 here attacking the queen on g3 and intending to take this pawn on g5 and after black captures a pawn on g5 even though black is very far behind in development you're still only one move away from castling the king 
we get queen h3 queen takes g5 and now sosa plays this move c4 now this is actually the top computer move but i think in general if i were playing in this position with the white pieces most likely it's not the moves that i would play here i think something like c3 for example or a move like g3 are perhaps a little bit more sensible maybe not g3 but definitely c3 is a little bit more sensible here because black still has to figure out to continue after say castles a move like rook ae1 and do you play knight f6 do you play h4 exactly what is the plan but Sosa goes for the very aggressive approach with c4 Levy of course captures we get this move d5 and now the move c5 is played here Sosa plays move knight c3 and this is the start of going wrong now while this move c4 was a top computer line I think in general trying to play this position is very very difficult and the idea of sacrificing a second pawn with d6 here to open up the diagonal in my opinion is simply not realistic at this level now if d6 were played after castles and rook a d1 knight to h4 I don't really see why white should be doing well here the computer says I guess bishop d5 and it's fine but you have to realize that in this position black is one two three four five six white has one two three four five so white is already down a pawn and it's very hard to play this position so Sosa plays another move that makes a lot of sense from a human perspective knight to c3 trying to bring the knight to the center and start forking this knight forks as the old saying goes Levy plays knight to d4 here another great move as he creates the bastion and the knight is always pressuring the bishop on f3 which guards the pawn on g2 we get this move rook a e1 levy goes king to f8 and now we have this move d6 now the sequence of moves is simply wrong from white it's worth pointing out that if white were to take the knight here on d7 this loses the game because after knight takes bishop checking the king king h1 queen g2 it's uh oh spaghetti -o time white is checkmated so now Sosa decides to play this move d6 but this overlooks a very very nice tactical tactical sequence which levy spots immediately and levy plays move queen to h4 sacrificing the queen for free but it is not for free now if white were to capture the knight on d7 knight f3 would once again be checkmate as the king has no squares available and if you play the very obvious looking queen takes queen this is not in fact a botez gambit because you have knight takes bishop checking the king white is unable to capture which means that now the knight is forking it's what we call the classic royal fork and after king h1 you take the queen and as we can do from the map black has two knights versus one knight so black would be up a piece and winning the game so here Sosa plays king to h2 the only move Levy trades the knight for the bishop and now he plays his move queen h3 now you'll of course notice from the bar that the engine hates this but I think from a human perspective it's a very very good decision because if you look at the time situation Levy is already down 25 minutes on the clock the king is a little bit iffy on f8 and let's say you play queen f4 king h1 and knight f6 if white gets d7 suddenly this pawn is close to the end of the board there might be a knight e4 there are threats with rook e8 somewhere it's very very hard to play so Levy decides to trade the Queens here and now we've reached an end game whereas we can tell from the pawn count black is uno dos tres cuatro cinco seis versus uno dos tres cuatro cinco so black has an extra pawn with a double pawn on c4 but white has this pass d pawn which he tries to use and keep on the board here Levy plays rook g6 good move pressuring the pawn on d6 immediately we get knight to e4 and now Levy plays the move rook e8 and we have the move rook g1 here the game continues with rook eight to e6 very very nice move here by the way because if white trades the rooks now you can take with the pawn and these two pawns become connected whereas at the present moment these pawns are split so you can capture the pawn correct your pawn structure but you also pressure the pawn on d6 here sosa plays the move king to h4 and now we get this move b6 from levy a logical move to protect the pawn on b6 so that now you can start moving with the knight and try to win the game we get king takes pawn Levy trades the rooks and now he plays his move knight to f6 now these moves might not be the absolute best moves for the computer but I really like the practicality behind the decision making because what happens here is that even though material is even here after the trade white's pawn structure is much worse black has this 4v2 on the queen side so with the 4v2 and black trying to push the p up the board there are no chances of losing the game and if white is absolutely precise it might be a draw but most likely you're playing for two results either you win the game or you draw the game and when you're playing someone who's so much higher rated than you you always want to try to keep that margin so even if the moves aren't the best computer moves black always maintains the advantage while not risking anything or risking the loss I should say specifically so we get rook d1 Levy goes king to e8 trying to stop this d pawn from getting up the board and now we have this move d7 king to d8 and the move king g4 here Levy plays rook to e6 trying to create the kebab by infiltrating with the rook on the second rank of course we get rook to d2 which stops the rook from going to e2 but now Levy plays the move rook to e7 trying to gobble his pawn on d7 
Here, Sosa plays the move King G5. We get Rook takes Pawn, Rook to C2, and now Levy plays this move B5, trying to start pushing P up the Queen side here. Now, it's a very, very nice situation because White's Pawns are also doubled here. So, in effect, in this end game, White only has one pawn here. Like, even if somehow you get this pawn here, for example, you still are only pushing one pawn because these pawns are stacked on top of each other. So after b5, Sosa plays f4, we get king c7, king f6, and now Levy goes king c6, we get f5, rook d5, trying to win this pawn on f5, f4 is played, and now Levy goes a5, trying to simply push p up the queen side. Here, Sosa plays the move a4, and now Levy captures, and we get this move rook f2. Now, you're probably wondering, wait, what is rook f2? Well, the problem is with Sosa played a4, I suspect that he missed it after pawn takes pawn and rook takes pawn. Black has this move rook to d4, where you offer the trade of the rooks, or you're pushing the pawn down the, down the board. Now, if white were to trade here, white loses the pawn race very quickly. Black gets the queen after f7. Simply, queen g4 will win the game here. And if you play rook to c2, now black can go rook takes f4 here, attacking the pawn on f5 from behind. Now, again, not clear cut whether this is actually winning, and maybe Sosa should have gone for this, but Sosa probably saw rook d4 and was like, nah, I don't want to go into this endgame. So instead, Sosa goes rook to f2, and now his plan is to take the pawn on f7. But because black has two sets of double pawns here, you can't really start pushing p very easily up the board. Here, Levy plays rook to d7, guarding the pawn on f7. And now we have the move rook to f3, rook to d3, rook f2, rook d7, rook f3, and rook d3, and rook f2 again. Now, at this point, Levy is a tough decision because after he makes this repetition, rook b7, by the way, would be the winning line because after rook f2, you can go a3, and now you start to walk the king of the pawns up the board. But in this position, Levy would love to be able to go back to d7 and then play rook b7, but you can't do that because if you play rook d7, this will result in a threefold, and the game will end in a draw. So he gets c3 here. Sosa takes, Levy plays rook to d7, and now it's very clear that what Levy is hoping to do is push this pass a pawn up the board. And in this position, Sosa plays c4, we get a3, and now we have this move rook to f3. Levy goes a4, rook takes a3, and now we get this move rook to a7. Now, Levy has messed this up here because at this point, you'll notice that the bar is back around equal, but it still remains very difficult for, black, for white to play because the rook is in front of this pass pawn, so this rook on a7 guards the pass pawn. It also guards the pawn on f7, and black has a various obvious I very obvious idea of going king b6, king a5, king b4, and simply pushing p up the board. So we get king to e5 here, and this is a mistake. Computer wants king g7, I think, because after king b6, f6, king a5, white is in time here with rook to e3 and rook to e7 to win the pawn on f7. And after king b6, rook a3, the game ends in a draw. And if you go king b4, rook e7 here, let's just say rook a8 after takes, a3, rook e1, a2, and now you king g7, followed by f7 and f8. White should be saving the game. But instead, Sosa goes king e5, we get rook to e7, king f6, rook a7, king e5, and now Levy plays king b6, trying desperately to get the king to a5 and b4. Here, Sosa plays king d6, and now Levy correctly plays the move king to a5, jettisoning, jettisoning the pawn on c5 and trying to activate the king. Now, this is the only way to try and play for a win here. If you play a move like rook to a8, white can probably go f6 and king e7 again, and with this pawn so close to the end of the board, black chances of ever winning are pretty much nil. So we get king a5, king takes c5, rook c7 is played, Sosa goes king d5, king b4, we get rook to a1, and now we have the move rook c5. Here, king d6 is played, the correct move, by the way, because if you go king to e4, black can probably even play something simple like, maybe not f6, but let's just say a3 here, and black should win the game because white is no longer creating a pass pawn, and black's a pawn is very close to the end of the board. So Sosa goes king d6, Levy plays rook takes c4, we get rook b1, king c3, and now we have this move rook to b7. Now this is a mistake here in this position, it's not the best move, but it's already very, very difficult to play because again, black's plans are much easier than white's. You simply want to push this a pawn down the board, and white has to try and calculate where do you sacrifice the rook, and how do you try to win the pawn on f7 to push the f pawns up. So we get rook b7, now f6 is played by Levy, and this is the all-star move that effectively wins the game, because now white is unable to win this pawn on f6 and stop the a pawn sort of at the same time. We get rook to b6, a3 played, rook to a6, king b3, and now Sosa plays king e7. But in this position, white is simply one move too slow here. If white could magically get this move king takes f6, for example, this would still be a draw, because after rook a3, let's just say you go um check or rookie six but let's just say rookie six a2 rook a1 
black queens after takes takes in this position white can go king g7 here and after check you simply go king to h7 king c4 f6 if king d5 white actually wins with f7 but after rook to f1 f7 takes king g7 and f8 white saves the game by the by the hair on his chinny chin chin but unfortunately for for Sammy Sosa here after King to e7 Levy has this great move Rook to a4 building the classic bridge here and the idea of pushing the pawn down to a1 and now white is simply lost Sosa plays Rook to b6 we get King to c2 we have Rook c6 King to d2 and what Levy is doing here is simply bringing the King back around here because the Rook is behind this pawn so you always can push the pawn forward but the main key is that you make sure your King is getting back before white can gobble this pawn and push the f pawns down the board we get to move rook d6 king to e2 played rook e6 and now levy goes king f2 not the only move to win by the way even king f3 would probably be winning here because after rook to e1 i think you have rook a6 guarding and king f4 actually is i saw the bar go up maybe king f6 is, is still okay but he goes to f2 here and the idea is again as long as white doesn't have the square you're going to be able to push the pawn up the board we get rook to c6 a2 rook to c1 and now levy plays move rook to a6 essentially setting up the the theme that i mentioned before where this rook on a6 guards the pawn on f6 guards the pawn on a2 and now black will bring the king back gobble some juicers and then walk all the way up the board so one sample line is rook to a1 king to e3 and let's say you go king f7 here after takes king g6 and king e5 let's just say check black can now go king to d4 rook to d1 and and this move king to c3 wins the game you're going to march the king forward push the pawn and here if white sacks after takes king d4 white is simply way too slow as you have rook to a6 winning the pawn on f6 in the game oh this is actually game weight this actually is the game sorry this is the game this is what happened <coughs> we get this position with king d4 king g7 and now after king to e5 f6 rook g2 the game ends here as you guys see I'm doing this recap on the fly so um this is actually what happened in the game pretty funny um and here Hor here uh Tomas Sosa resigns the game because after king f7 rook to f2 Levy wins the pawn on f6 and the game now so very very good technique from Levy at the end I mean this is one thing that I, that I would say is he found some very very good moves which were critical um late in the game with very little time on the clock so a pretty good game from levy um the opening could have you could say like if you were playing someone really strong it might not have worked out as well as it did but against a player of this level i think it was a very good approach and i think also his opponent was kind of taken aback by the aggressiveness of the of the attacking from levy with his h5 g5 area er, very early so a very very good game from levy um very very good technical very very good technically at the end sure he he missed some stuff and the game should have been a draw with perfect play but overall very very good job by Levy keeping his nerves and his wit together um as he was when he was very low on time so a very very good win for Levy obviously it's only one game in the tournament it's a very very long event uh it doesn't mean that he suddenly becomes a GM or the tournament is over all these different things but it's certainly a good confidence booster for him to win in the first round against a top ranked player from Argentina so very very good stuff scuffed video maybe it's scuffed but I think people people in chat probably are enjoying it so on that note you guys I hope you have enjoyed this recap of the Levy game from the Madrid Invitational which is being held in Madrid after the Clash of Claims event if you are not already subscribed to my channel make sure that you smash that subscribe button below and we'll be back soon with some more great recaps if Levy keeps winning of course I will make recaps of his game if not probably will focus on some of the other major events going on like the UZ Cup featuring Noterbeck and Arjun but at any rate hope you guys enjoyed it hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys very soon have a good one bye